Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Kennesaw Family Life Church. We're so glad you're here. We are. Mm -hmm. And just in case you haven't been here before, we have... The Yay! <laughs> I love that part. And here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look off, if you're on your computer, if you look up to this side of our screen or underneath our screen, if you're on a mobile device, mm -hmm. you will see a window. Yes. Guess what's in that window? I'm going to go with chat. Yay! $500. <laughs> and you would be correct. It is our chat window. If you have never been here before, or even if you're just joining us, make sure you say hello over in the window so we can greet you. Mm -hmm. Like live greetings. Yes. I mean, we just greeted you, but live greetings. So. <laughs> Our real selves in real time, as in opposed real to time, yes. as opposed to like weird internet time, which is what we're doing now. Exactly. Um, also, in that chat window, you'll see tabs at the top. Um, mm -hmm. There's three tabs. The one you're on for chat that comes up automatically. Then the next tab is the Bible tab mm -hmm. that will take you to the U version of the Bible, where you can just follow along any scripture that you want while the message is happening. Mm -hmm. And then the third tab is our notes tab. So uh, Pastor Larry loads the notes for the week into that tab. However, they are not printable. They are not. And it's just the full notes with no blanks. Mm -hmm. So if you like to take notes, mm -hmm. you got to look up at the top of the screen. Yeah, it's like, it's that. I'm pretty sure it's over there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on the right. So it's the same. So it says sermon notes. If you click on that right up at the top, it'll take you right to our website. Mm -hmm. And you got to look up in the top right corner of our website. Yep. There's a little PDF guy. Mm -hmm. little PDF guy. You can click on him and that's a printable version that you can take notes out. Yeah. There you go. There's also some other buttons up there. Yes. We have um, volunteer so if you want to volunteer uh, with, with us, mostly with Forever Fed, Forever although I know Fed, yeah. we have some other volunteer opportunities, uh, if you would please click on there and register uh, so you can sign the little waiver and the thing. It's not a whole lot of stuff. But. Right, yeah. And uh, so the Forever Fed one, it should take you right to that page. Mm -hmm. um, so that will take you to their waiver. And if you're going to come and help with our food pantry, we really need you to click on that to come to sign up. Mm -hmm. um, we also have that prayer button. Yes. And a prayer button here. Right. <laughs> so two places. Uh, if you want live prayer, so if you want somebody to pray with you right now, um, just click on that request prayer button mm -hmm. uh, on your screen there, and it will open up a chat window with one of our hosts who mm -hmm. can then pray with you right now. And it's private. It's just you and them. It is a private window. But if you just want to send your prayer request up here at the top where it says prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, click on that. It takes you to the website into our uh, Google Doc where you just fill in your prayer request. Click send and that sends Pastor Larry and I your prayer request and we can add that to our prayer list mm -hmm. for the for the church. Yeah. Um, there's also a calendar button up here. Yes. It's in the very far corner. And in that calendar button, there is a beautiful like calendar of things that happen every month put together by the lovely Pastor Jennifer and Heather. Um, yeah, and so all the announcements that are soon to follow are on that tab for your reference. It does. It, uh, it takes you to the newsletter uh, straight away. I just clicked on it to make sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> it works. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last button, or the first button, really, if you're, looking, if you're looking from left to right on your screen, is our giving button. Yeah. If you'd like to give in today's offering, just click on that. Mm -hmm. Takes like three seconds. Uh, Basically, you just fill it in and hit send, I think. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's, like you should do. it's very simple. Very, uh, We try and make everything easy for you guys to find on the platform. Mm -hmm. And that, my friends, is the tour. Hey, welcome back. Uh, hi, glad you're here. From our past selves. Yes, and now you know your way around this that, lovely space. That is. And hopefully you're using the chat. Yes, and to encourage that. Also because we are family here, we want to get to know you better. We have, I'm doing a lot of this today, sorry, uh, a question. We do have a question. We have a question. The question is... What is one thing that instantly makes your day better? Everybody has bad days, so like, what's something that can just instantly pick you up from your bad day? Turn and make it, it around. Better? All right, take a couple minutes to talk about it in the chat, and we'll be right back.
Hello. Hi. Welcome so back. Hopefully you had a chance to uh, talk about what what's something that can turn your day around instantly. instantly. Make it better. Make it better. Make it feel nicer. So uh, what 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 you got for us? So the the like super spiritual sounding answer for mine is when someone uh, you know a small random act of kindness. But the one that I'm actually thinking of uh, sounds very first world problems. Like some days when I'm having a really bad day, I'll go get myself a Starbucks. Just sitting in the Starbucks line, and sometimes the person in front of you will pay for yours. Like you know they can just do that. It's like hey, I'm gonna pay for mine, and the person behind me. And I mean, as I say, that sounds very first world because I'm over here in the Starbucks line, but that just that makes my day better. It's like just this nice person has paid for my coffee. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I think for me, it's just like, I don't know, like the only time I have really, my bad days are like overwhelming days. Mm. So like for me, like doing something to escape, like mostly to me, that's like going outside and mm -hmm. just like getting away from technology and people and these and just getting into nature Me and taking a walk instinct. yeah yeah so i think i think that's for me something that it can just turn my day around because i'm just like i need that is nice i need quiet <laughs> yeah right I've, I've noticed that more and more as i've gotten uh older i guess but like you know going out like I don't know if it's because you spend more time outside when you're a kid your parents are like go play outside or whatever right? but i mean being outside really is very nice well, and like even more so scientifically, it makes sense because when we're outside, we're soaking up like fresher air and vitamin D from the sun is being activated. So mm -hmm. like it makes sense even scientifically that that helps. So nice. There you go. I heard a thing too, uh, more, more scienciness or whatever. And I, I don't remember exactly how they were applying it, but essentially like people feel more relaxed if you're outside and you hear birds singing and they were equating it to like, um, you know, when we used to like live outside in the woods and whatever. Yeah. And if, you know, if it's like peaceful and happy and there's birds singing, it's like, oh yes, there's not a saber toothed cat coming to eat me. <laughs> birds <laughs> like, are singing. Hooray. <laughs> of course, when you see the birds flying <laughs> away rapidly, that's when you're worried. <laughs> so you start running really fast. <laughs> Sorry, okay. So it gets me in all those movies where like somebody's out in nature and like animals are running by and you're like, run. Oh no. <laughs> they know something you don't. They know something stop right away. <laughs> when you see the animals running, you should run too. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we hope you guys had fun answering the question. Yes, yes. Up there, Hopefully, that gives you some more time as we as we bantered back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but maybe you're wondering what's happening this week, Jocelyn. What is happening, Pastor Jen? I don't know. That's not true. She's I telling us. I'm and, just kidding. <laughs> so Wednesday night. Yeah. Wednesday night is our once month game night. Game. <laughs> Sorry, it's my favorite. I look, anyway. I look forward to it every month. Me too. So it's uh, 7 p.m. here at desktop. If you come in the front doors where we normally come in, you head through those back doors, like towards the bathroom, you will see us. You, us. You'll definitely see us. Yeah. We'll, we're in the big collaborate space. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday morning, our men's group mm -hmm. meets at Honeysuckle Biscuit and Bakery. Mm -hmm. They have breakfast. Breakfast. See if we can add any more bees in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they meet at 8 a.m. and they're usually done around 9. So mm -hmm. that's, that's that's uh, Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and then Monday through Thursday at in the mornings. In the morning at 7.14 a.m. on Zoom only, we have prayer. That's right. Join us for that prayer time. It's a great time. We're seeing God meet a lot of needs. So mm -hmm. um, it's been nice to share some praise reports yeah. of God's answered prayer on there. I always like those. And then next Sunday, yes. next Sunday is our Forever Fed Sunday. Mm -hmm. So if you like to volunteer for that, click up there at the top of the screen and go to the volunteer page, sign up. Mm -hmm. And that puts you on the waiver. If you need food and you're coming for that, so volunteers be here at 3.30, mm -hmm. uh, the food pantry starts at 4. Yes. There you go. That's what's happening this week. It is. That's it. Ba -da -ba -da. Where you can get connected because you mm -hmm. don't need to do life alone. That's nope. not how God created it. So nope. um, before we move on with the rest of our service, let's just take a moment and pray. Nope. All right. Join with me now. Father God, we are so thankful for today and all that you've given us, God. I pray right now that you would be with each and every person that's here in the service online this morning. God, I pray that you would just reach each ear with your word this morning. God, as we sing, as we, as we worship you with our music, that you would be lifted up and that you would be pleased with that. Pour more of your spirit out on us today and help us grow closer to you because we were here together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hmm. Let's worship him with our music.
stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. What can I say?
strength, you're my defender. You're my refuge in the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to my soul, and I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go. that even when it feels like we're so by ourselves, you're right there. When it feels like everything is going wrong, you are with us, holding us, protecting us. God, we worship you. Thank you, Pastor Jennifer, for leading us in worship today. We're so excited that you've come to be with us, and we take time every week to pray together. It's part of our building community. It's a part of how we love one another. If you've been with us for a while, you know that that we've talked about and, and have been studying Jesus and how he's told us to love one another. This is part of that. We pray for each other's needs, and we don't even have to know the people that we're praying for for God to reach out and do that. I also want to make you aware of a couple things. Uh, we also pray over our tithe and offering. If you're a regular attender, you know how to get to the, the giving tab at the top. It was in our tour. I also want to make you aware of a missions trip I have coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, I've been a part of this group called NASMOTO that takes guys up on a missions trip by motorcycle. We go by motorcycle. Every Labor Day weekend, we go up to South Dakota and spend some time working uh, at Pass Creek Church of God on the Indian Reservation there with the Lakota Indians. I will be leaving in two weeks to take that trip again. We've got nine guys going. This is not a ministry that's necessarily a part of our church. I'm a part of a group that does this, and it's a great opportunity. What I'm asking you is to join in with me, to partner with me on this trip. We're trying to raise funds to pour into the Lakota tribe, into that community. And we're doing it through a motorcycle club that's there that does specific projects and helps people in that community. Last year, we were able to give them $1,200. Our goal this year is $2,500. You can participate in that by going to the giving page, going to missions, and you'll see the term headwaters. If you would give to that headwaters trip, it will help us to be able to pour into that community, to be able to fund this trip, to be able to go there. So I wanna thank you for partnering with that and for us to be able to give back into that community. It's been such a blessing to be a part of this. This will be my sixth year going. Uh, And it's only six years old, I was on the original trip. So we started with five guys, this year we have nine, and, and we usually take about 
seven to 12 guys every year, and it's a life-changing experience. So if you want to join and partner with us on that, or if you want to go on that trip, just let me know, and I'll let you know the details of how to make that happen. But we want to pray for that today. We're just going to continue to pray for the needs of the people of this church, for the service, for our offering, for our community partners. We have uh, Cobb Vineyard Church. We have Raise the Bar Coaching is our our, uh, business community partner. And our missions this month is global initiative that reaches Muslims all over the world. So let's join together in prayer. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. Lord, I thank you that you hear our prayers, that you heal. Even though we don't know the details, you still heal. You touch. You provide. Lord, we put our trust in you today. Lord, I pray over this missions trip that I'm going on. Lord, I pray for each one of us that's going, that you would help motorcycles and support vehicles and everything to function properly, that you would give everybody strength, that you would raise the appropriate funds that we can pour into that community and bless that community under your name. And Lord, I pray right now that you would prepare the hearts that we're going to minister to as we're there. Father, I ask that you would be with each one of us today, that you would meet all of the needs, the physical needs, the financial needs, the spiritual needs. Lord, we give them to you. Father, we pray for healing over arthritis, diabetes, cancer, COVID, all of these things that attack our bodies. Lord, we're asking for healing right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we're asking for healing of emotional needs. If it's anxiety, fear, depression, Lord, we're praying that you would relieve that, that you'd bring joy and peace. Father, for those that are looking for places to stay, Lord, that you would provide rent, that you would provide the right place to rent. Lord, housing has been such a difficult thing, and we pray that you would touch them. Lord, this economy has been very tough. Everything is more expensive. Lord, I pray that you provide all that we need. Lord, as we give today, it's a part of our worship. We give because we love you, because we're worshiping you, because we want to give our first fruits to you to say thank you for what you've given us. You provide everything we need. Lord, we trust you with our finances. We trust you with our health. We trust you with our jobs and our families. Lord, we ask that you would just come over our nation Draw our nation back to you. Draw our leaders to your presence that they would be led and guided by you. And Father, we pray right now for our missionaries that go around the world and global initiative specifically for those involved in reaching Muslims around the world through global initiative. I pray your blessing, your provision on them. Lord, I lift up our our business community partner and raise the bar coaching. Lord, we ask for a blessing upon Joe Stockman and, and everybody that he works with. Father, we're asking that you would touch Cobb Vineyard Church today, that you would bless them, that you would anoint them, that you would strengthen them, and Lord, that you would meet all of their needs as they minister to this community. Lord, we love you and thank you for what you're doing in and through us today. We praise you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. We are Still in our Reflecting the Light series, and if you've been with us, we're in part 30. I know this is a long journey, but we're on this journey together to discover the words of Jesus, to discover how he told us to love, how he told us to lead, the things that Jesus poured into his disciples, the things that Jesus opposed. Who did he oppose? Why did he oppose them? And and what was the, the motivation behind that? So we've been on this journey. We called it Reflecting the Light because... We are called to be disciples of Jesus and to make disciples. And the way that we do that is by reflecting him. In John 1, we learned that that Jesus is the light of the world. So it just made sense that we be a reflection of that light, that we represent that light to the world around us, to the people around us. We don't save anyone. That's the Holy Spirit's job. He's the one that brings people to the point of salvation. We are just a part of a partnership of a, of a ministry that God has called us to, to draw people towards him by the way we live, by the way we honor him. So just to bring you up to speed where we're at, we're, we're coming into the end of Jesus' earthly life here on earth through the book of John. We've been, John is our roadmap. We've been going through the book of John. We're going to be in chapter 15 today. But this roadmap, Jesus 
from the time that he raised Lazarus from the dead, which was his last public miracle, outside, obviously, the resurrection, but his last public miracle, and then he comes into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and they call it the triumphal entry, and people are saying, blessed be who comes in the name of the Lord, and they're, they're treating him like a king. And it was all those people that had known about him raising Lazarus from the dead and the things that he had done. But then things kind of change. Jesus goes in, he's, he's in the last week of his life, and he's spending time with his disciples. He's kind of circling in for the moment. And he's pouring into his disciples. A couple weeks ago, I asked you, what would you do if you knew that you had one week to live and the people around you are trying to pour into them so that they could continue doing what you were doing, what what your mission was? So Jesus gives them a lot of things. It started with him washing the disciples' feet, him taking off that robe, making himself vulnerable, getting down on his knees and washing the disciples' feet and caring for them and loving them in that very intimate way that that was really a job of a slave or a servant to wash the feet of somebody that came into a home because they they stepped in all kinds of stuff, dirt roads, they didn't ride in cars, they they rode camels or donkeys or horses and, and there was all kinds of stuff on the road when they walked, so their feet were always really dirty. He even washed the, the, the disciple that would betray him, Judas's feet. And he knew Judas was about to betray him because after they washed the feet, they sat down for a meal together and he told them, hey, somebody's going to, one of you is going to betray me. And then one of his close disciples said, well, who is it, Lord? And he said, the one I dip this bread in the, the wine and give it to is the one that will betray me. And we know that was Judas. And then Judas left. And Jesus went through a teaching after Judas left that talked about loving one another. He commanded us to love one another. He said, look, they're going to know that you're my disciples by the way you love one another. Then he told us to trust him, that he's going away. He would come back for us again, but that we needed to trust him, that we would know how to get to where he's going. And I gave a GPS illustration, and we have to trust our GPS, even though it takes us on paths that we don't always understand We have to trust it to get us to where we want to go. And then also, he told us that if we loved him, we would obey his commands. And we spent some time talking about that. We're going to get into that a little more later. And then he said, he promised us that he would send the Holy Spirit to help us through this whole process. That brings you up to speed. That's what we've talked about for the last few weeks. Now, this conversation continues. Again, he's in full download mode. I, I, I... you ever heard the term drinking from a fire hydrant is just water just pouring out and you couldn't, it just, it would overwhelm you. That's what I feel like with this. Jesus is just dumping so much stuff on his disciples and he's pouring into them and pouring into them. And you know, what's funny is he said, Hey, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to remind you of all that I'm teaching you. And that's really the purpose of the, one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to remind us what we've been taught, to help us understand what we've, we've been taught. So Jesus goes on in chapter 15 to give us a very practical illustration of the things that he's been telling us. His relationship with the Father, our relationship with him, and how it all works together. And he used a farming illustration, which he does quite often, because that time period, everybody, there was always an agricultural um element to each community because they didn't have transportation systems and and planes and semis to move stuff around the way that we do now and packing facilities and and all of that. Every community was supported in one area with agriculture from that area, business, everything supported that one hub. And so he used an illustration that they would know, plus it kind of tied into uh, what was prophesied about Israel years ago. So I want you to turn over to John 15. I'm going to read the first 17 verses. We're going to read it all out together in just a second. So it'll be kind of a long passage, and then we'll dig into this. John 15, verses 1 through 17. It says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they'll produce even more fruit. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. 
For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile and burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends, and since I have told you everything the Father has told me, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. There's a lot in there. It circles around some of the same themes we've already talked about. Jesus is really driving home this point. He's trying to get us to understand. Now, in this illustration, there's three significant participants. You have the gardener, who is the Father, God the Father, the gardener. You have the vine, which is Jesus. He is the vine, the source. And then you have the branches, which is you and me, us, the disciples, the followers of Jesus. And I hope you're a follower of Jesus. If you're not, this may not make sense, but I hope it it ties in for you an understanding of how this all works together. So I want to spend the next few minutes talking about each of the roles that are in this illustration and what they mean and how they apply to our lives. So I want to first start out with the vine. I want to start out with Jesus. It's always good to start with Jesus, right? We want to start with Jesus. He is the source of everything the branches need. So if you think about a grapevine, and this is or an olive tree, an olive vine, and you get you get this idea, you have the trunk or the main vine, whether it's a tree or or a grapevine. That goes down into the ground and it gets the water, it gets the nutrients, it gets everything from the soil and it comes up through there and then things branch off of it and that's where the fruit is produced, the branches. But that vine is the source. You sever the branch from the vine, there's nothing left, it just dies. So Jesus is that source. He's the center of everything that we need. Salvation comes through him. The power, the strength, all comes through him. Look at verse 5, says this, Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. As branches, we need to stay connected to the vine. Jesus is the key to eternal life. He brings this life. He supplies this life. We need to... trench ourselves in him. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. That's a big statement. But you have to remember that Jesus sees things through the light of all time. And what really matters is what leads to eternity. So we can, we can do a lot of things in this life. And, and technically, we can do a lot of things without Jesus, but they don't last. They're not eternal. They're for our own glory or for our own benefit. Sometimes they're to benefit other people. But the things that last for eternity, the things that draw people to him and and the way we love each other, those are the eternal things that come from Christ that will last forever. I wanted to point out Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. It says, Don't store up your treasures here on earth where moth eats them, and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal, store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, 
and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there your desires of your heart will also be. Jesus is pointing out what's really important to you. This life is just a whisper, it's a breath. We have, what, 70, 80, 90 years if we're fortunate? Some of us less. That goes quickly. But we have all eternity with Him, and so the things and the way we live our lives and the things that we do prepare us for what's next. And we can't do those things outside of Him. He is what brings us into eternity. He's what lasts forever. Jesus longs for all creation to be in Him, to be attached to the vine. As a part of the vine, we use what we have been given to create. We're we're a part of creation. We're made in His image. We create and draw creation towards Him. That's what's amazing. We use our talents and abilities to impact the people that are around us, to draw people to Him. So apart from Him, we really are empty and really don't have anything. So that's the vine. He's the source. The second thing is the gardener, who is the Father. Remember, we have the Trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, three distinct roles. In this illustration, the Father is the gardener. What is the role of the gardener? It's to care for the vine. To be there to care for the vine, to to love the vine, to pour into. So it sounds awesome to be the gardener, but the gardener has a really tough task. Because the gardener's task is to cut and prune and keep things, keep the vine in the right shape, and the branches in the right shape to grow. Verse 2 tells us this, He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. Think about that. He cuts off the branches that don't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they'll produce even more. So I want to start with the hardest part first. Let's just jump into the hardest part, the cutting. Those who have been cut off. You know, a lot of people use the excuse that they they can't trust God because how could God send somebody to hell? How could a loving God cut somebody off from eternity with Him? It seems difficult for us to to understand, but yet when you think of things, when you think it through, when you understand things throughout history, for those that reject God, for those that push him away and say, I don't need what you have, I don't want what you have, I'm just going to live my life the way that I want to live, they're, they're rejecting him, not him rejecting them, and they're the ones that get cut off because they're not attached to the vine, they're not attached to the source. One of the things to keep in mind is God's main goal is to keep all the branches healthy and connected. That's his purpose. Just like a gardener caring for a vineyard or if you've seen apple trees, olive trees, any of those things, when when branches die and when they fall or whatever, they they cut them off and they burn them and, and get rid of what's there. And that's what it says is that Those who reject Jesus in the end will be cut off and thrown into fire. That's hell. That's the final judgment. That's the sad part. This is hard to hear. It's hard for us to understand. It's hard for us to reconcile how a loving God can do that. But he gave us free will. He gives us the ability to choose. He just wants us to choose him, to love him. If he forced creation to love him, we wouldn't have choice. We'd just be clones or robots. We watch movies about this all the time. One of the things that makes us human, what what makes us an amazing creation, is that we have our own free will, our own choices that we have to make. And then God comes and shows us that way, but it's not easy. When the vine isn't cared for, when disease or things get in, Sometimes God has to cut off those branches so it doesn't corrupt the rest of the vine or the other branches. 
they were just to, if, 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 if you were gardening and you were to leave diseased or dying branches on a tree or a vine, eventually it spreads and kills what's around it. It's hard for us to understand. But don't mistake this hard choice of cutting away as being something easy. It breaks the heart of the Father. He longs for his creation to be healthy. He longs for his creation to remain in him. His goal is not to push people away or to tell people how awful they are. His goal is to help them to know and love him. The problem is we get hard hearts. We want what we want. And we we don't like what God tells us, so we push him away. Or we don't understand, or, or other people that follow him have pushed him away because we've not lived a way that honors him. We haven't shown that love, and that breaks the heart of the Father. Now, I want to bring you a word of encouragement and urgency that comes out of this. Until this life is over, nothing is lost. There is still an opportunity for everyone to accept the love of Jesus. In Romans 11, Paul deals with the sin of Israel and being cut off from the vine and then being rejected. I want to encourage you, read the entire passage of Romans 11. We can't right now, but he really goes into this in great detail, but it would take too much time. But I do want to read a portion of it. I want to read Romans 11, 11, and I'm going to jump down and read 17 through 24. But I would love for you to join with me in this because Paul gives a great illustration about... because. Israel was often called the branches or part of that vine, and and they were cut off from God because of their sin, and they're rejecting him. And he's saying, look, you are not beyond recovery. Romans 11, 11 says, did God's people stumble and fall beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient, so God made salvation available to the Gentiles, but he wanted his own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. When we're living in the fullness of Jesus and showing love and peace to others that he offers to us, to those outside the relationship, they become jealous of what we have. And they want, to, they want what we have, and so it draws, they have a choice. They'll either draw in and want, try and get what we have, or they're going to reject and push it away and become angry. That's what's happening there. A little side note. Now, I want to look at verses 17 through 24. It says, But some of the branches from Abraham's tree... Some of the people of Israel have been broken off, and you Gentiles, who were branches from a wild olive tree, have been grafted in. So now you receive the blessings God had promised to Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. But you must not brag about being grafted in and replacing the branches that have been broken off. You are just a branch, not the root. Well, you may say the branches were those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Notice how God is both kind and severe. His, he's severe towards those who disobeyed but kind to you who continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting, you also will be cut off. And if the people of Israel turn from their unbelief, they will be grafted in again. For God has the power to graft them back into the tree. You by nature were a branch cut from a wild olive tree. So if God is willing to do something contrary to nature by grafting you into his cultivated tree you will be far more eager to graft the original branches back into the tree where they belong. Do you get that? So he's talking about Israel, the original promised ones. They were original branches, and many did not, and many Jews still do not believe in Jesus as the Messiah, as the Christ. They are the original branches that need to be brought back in. We as Gentiles, and Gentiles, anyone who's not a Jew... We're grafted in. We weren't a part of that original promise, but we were made a part of that promise and grafted into the family of God. And we become a part of that vine. We become a part of it. That's the beauty of this is that God wants to bring all of us back in, into that right relationship. 
to bring healing and restoration, to bring us back into the source of the Creator, back into Jesus, who gives us everything that all good things pour out of. Now, I want to take a few minutes and switch gears and talk about the pruning. The cutting was removing those that have rejected God altogether. The pruning is talking about you and me, who are believers and followers of Jesus. We're connected to the vine. But maybe there's some things that are slowing down our growth. We're not producing the amount of fruit that we need to. Every year, people that own, or, well, we lived in Florida for years, and orange groves, they come in and prune the trees. Good producing trees, but they would prune them back. Or if you've had shrubs and trees and, and bushes in your yard, you prune them back so they grow more healthy the next year. If you don't prune them, they get out of control and eventually die. The pruning makes the, the plant more fruitful. In verse 2b, it says, And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more fruit. So how does this relate to our lives? The Father prunes us through various ways so that we can become more fruitful. Often pruning hurts. <laughs> It doesn't sound good, does it, to, to rip these things out, cut these things off, and, and trim us so that we can produce more fruit. It, it hurts. That can be trials and difficulties that we go through. It can be persecution. It can be all of these things. This life, we were never promised a smooth road or a perfect path. Actually, we were promised that we would be hated because of following Jesus, we, prom we were promised there would be persecution, there would be difficulties. We live in a broken, sinful world. There's disease. That's why we pray for those. There are going to be bumps in your life that are going to be difficult. That's a part of the pruning process that God allows us to go through so that we can produce more fruit. Now think about it. All of the New Testament writers wrote on this subject. I'm going to highlight three. Paul, in Romans 5, 3 through 5, says this, We rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And, diver and endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Awesome. Now, Peter. So you have Paul. Now, Peter. 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through. As if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad. For these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. We're going to go through sufferings. James. James, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete needing nothing. Now, I'm going to tell you, we're never perfect and complete till the end of this life. We won't be like Jesus until we leave this world. So we're going to go through trials and troubles the rest of our lives. How we handle them, where we put our trust, do we go deeper into the vine to the source when we go through those difficulties? The pruning happens. Maybe it's relationships that need to be cut out of your life because they're they're sucking you away from the, the, the source. Maybe it's you're too wrapped up in entertainment. Maybe you're consumed with watching TV and sports and all these things, and they're drawing your attention away from the vine. Maybe it's just sickness or difficulties or family relationships, whatever it is. Those pruning processes help us to grow. They help us to become stronger and to do what? Produce fruit. What fruit are we supposed to produce? We're supposed to produce love. We're supposed to produce fruit that draws people towards Jesus. That's our job. That's our mission. To use what God's given us to draw people to him. That doesn't mean you have to be a pastor, a preacher, lead a group, or anything like that. 
Our lives are a reflection of him. So what comes out of us draws people towards him because he flows out of us. I want you to understand that. That's why it's so important that we be active about discipling those that we encounter in our community. We've got to be active and intentional about building relationships that draw people to him. So the pruning process helps us become more like Christ. It's cutting away all the things that hold us back and slow us down. The final thing, the branches, us. What is our role in this conversation? What specific instructions are we to do as the branches? And this is the larger part of this. I want to read through 5 all the way through 17. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me remain in Christ. I will remain in them. He'll put his source through us. Will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered in a pile and are burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master does not confide in slaves. You are my friends, and since I have told you everything the Father has told me, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask using my name. This is my command. Love each other. So, A few things that we can take from this as as branches. We've got to remain in Him. That's remaining in His Word. Read your Bibles. Outside of Sundays, outside of these groups, get into the Word of God. Fill yourself with the source of Jesus. He is the Word of God. When you read Scripture, you're pouring Him into you. We are to remain in His presence, spend time with Him in prayer, worship together. We need to have them in our lives. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you so that we can remain in Him. That's key. Then, like we talked about last week, obey His commands. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. He told us we remain in Him when we obey His commands. We talked about those commands last week. We talked about loving each other, which we're going to talk about again in just a second, praying for your enemies, repent, all of those things. There are multiple, multiple commands. You can go back to last week's message and you can just read scripture and see the commands that Jesus gave us. But there's been an underlying theme going all the way back to Jesus washing the disciples' feet and telling them, if you want to be first, you've got to serve. Underlying theme through all of this that Jesus has just hammered home, and that's that we must absolutely must, no exceptions, love one another. Love one another. It breaks my heart when I hear stories of people that have gone through churches that when they've gone through difficult times, maybe they've sinned, maybe, and they've been treated like trash, ostracized, gossiped about, ridiculed. That's not loving one another. See, when somebody stumbles and falls, we should be right there with them to help pick them up and love them and help restore them. Not condone what they did, but love them through it so that they can get to the other side, so that they can be in the vine and have that source flow through them. We're to love each other. He really, 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 really wants us to love one another. It's probably the primary commandment. It goes all the way back to Matthew 22, where he told us about the greatest commandment, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We're to love one another. 
he went so far to show the disciples what it means to love one another. He's illustrated it. He's shown it. He's lived it. He called us his friends. And he said, look, as my friends, there's no greater love than to lay my life down or to, for a friend to lay his life down for another friend. Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to die for you. I'm giving up my life so that you can have eternity. I'm laying it down freely. He's illustrating all these things. Our focus as branches, as disciples, is to remain connected to the vine, to remain in the source, to know his word, to spend time in prayer, to live out the things that he's called us to, and then to be fruitful. The whole purpose is for us to be fruitful. When we're fruitful, we're using what God's given to us, and we're giving it away so that others can be drawn into him. That's the point. God isn't pouring out blessings just to make our lives better. That would be foolish. He, he wants our lives to be good. He wants us to be at peace in Him. And you know what? We can have the peace of God. When we remain connected to the vine, we can have peace of God through all those trials, through that pruning process, because we know that when we're done, that's why Paul and, and Peter and, John and James said, hey, Count it joy when you go through these trials and troubles. Expect them because what comes out of them is a much better version of you. You've, your endurance grows. Your faith grows. All those things grow when you trust Him through those trials. When you put your faith in Him and you remain connected. He gives us the Holy Spirit to do that. So your task, your job, your mission as disciples who are to make disciples is one Get your life right with Jesus. Make sure that you're connected to the vine. Make sure that you're spending time in prayer. Make sure you're actively getting to know him, letting his word absorb into your life, and then let it flow out of you to the people that are around you. Let it produce fruit. And when it produces fruit, it's going to draw people towards Jesus. And then we're completing the circle. And what you do is going to be different than what I do because God created you specifically the way you are because other people are going to be drawn to you and to the joy and the love that's flowing out of you. No one person is greater than another. No one person has better gifts than another. Stop coveting what other people have and allow God to use what you have. He gave you those gifts specifically because you are unique to Him. And the love that He pours out of you is going to look different and it's going to reach a different group of people than the love that He pours out of me. Remain connected to Him. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill your life, to recall the things that you've learned, to give you boldness and strength to impact the people that are around you. But those things can't happen if you allow all the distractions of, these, of this world to choke it out. To tear you away from the vine. Jesus wants you to remain connected to him. And if you don't have a relationship with him, he's longing to graft you in, to adopt you into that family to bring you back to Him. He wants all creation to be joined to Him. He wants all of us to be redeemed. And the primary way that we show that we're a part of the vine is by the way we love one another. You must love one another. I want to encourage you as we close today, do all these things that I've talked about, and then actively reach out to people around you encourage them, text them, call them, email them, whatever you need to do, whatever is appropriate. Encourage them and strengthen them. Let them know you care. Let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you're available to be there if they need something. That's how we show love to one another. And then just don't say it. Be there when they need you. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you today so that we can fulfill the mission of being disciples that make disciples. That's what Jesus called us to do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. 
Lord, I thank you that we are attached to the vine, to you, Jesus. I pray that you would pour through us and out us so that we can see others' lives changed. And Lord, give us strength during that pruning process to remember that it's going to grow us, that's going to help us to become more like you, more fruitful. Lord, we want to be fruitful. We want to see this climate of this culture changed. We want to be more like you. Father, we want to see heaven filled with your creation, with your people, with your disciples, the ones that you love. We want to fill heaven. Lord, help us to be more like you today so that we, the lost can find you. And Father, I pray that your anointing and your Holy Spirit would fill us today. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being a part of the service. If you need prayer, if you have questions, anything, please click that prayer box. It'll open a private window to our host so that we can talk with you and pray with you. We love you. We hope to see you back again next week. If it's not online, please feel free to join us in person, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great week. Hello. Hey, Welcome thanks back. for staying with us. Yeah. It's the end of the service time. Yeah. So if you've ever been with us before, you know what that means. Speed run. That's right. <laughs> What's happening this week? Yes. Exactly. So Wednesday night. Game night. Uh, 7 p.m. Desktop. Thursday morning. Me honey, but ah, the men's <laughs> breakfast at Honeysuckle Biscuit or Bakery, 8 a.m. And next Sunday afternoon. Forever Fed at 3.30 if you're coming to volunteer, 4 p.m. if you're coming for food. And Monday through Thursday, 7.14 a.m. on Zoom only. We have our morning prayer time. Ta-da! Uh, where we meet together and uh, Pastor Larry usually shares a little scripture and yeah. we pray together. It's so very good. hopefully you'll join us for that. Yes. Please don't do life alone. Um, remember the chat stays open. You don't have to sign off right now. You can stay on for a little bit, a little yes. bit and chat for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, shoot somebody a text this week. Let them know you're thinking about them, really? not talking about them. That would be rude. No, that's an entirely different <laughs> that's thing. An enti that we need a new message on that one. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, uh, we don't want you guys to feel alone. Uh, we are family here and please reach out if you need anything. That's right. And we will see you next, next time. Week. Bye. Bye.